Hello. So recently, I've been getting asked a lot of questions about Mage Beam, and today I'm going to be clearing most of those questions up, and if there's anything else which I missed about Mage Beam, I'll just leave it down below in the description under like a section, anything I miss. So in this video, I'm going to be covering what is Mage Beam, how to set up for Mage Beam, showing off different Mage Beam setups, while also showing off how much damage I can do with them, showing off different Mage Beam weapons. Then I'm going to be comparing Berserker and Mage Beam, showing which one is actually better. Then finally, I'm going to be giving my overall review on Mage Beam, saying is it good, is it bad, but anyway, let's get into what is Mage Beam. So what is Mage Beam? Mage Beam is a Mage passive ability, which is called Mage Staff. Basically what it does is all your melee attacks become ranged, those attacks do deal percentage more of their melee damage, increased by your intelligence. So basically, the more intelligence I have, the more damage I'll be doing, which makes it especially good for a mage. And that has definitely made some people think I'm using some sort of reach. The 147% might not look too high, but when you consider that right now I'm out of dungeons with 1,403 intelligence, fold my spirit scepter for a tiny bit more, it will go up even more, to 188%. And then if I go to the end of a dungeon, it can go up to like 600%, as you can see here, which basically makes it so that you're doing seven times the amount of damage that you're going to do before. And when you compare that with Berserker, you're doing 1.9 times, if you're like level 30 Berserker. So I sort of explained how the intelligence bit works, so you might not fully understand it from that explanation, but, so I thought I'd just add a bit more in. So it increases your damage. For example, if you're playing as no class and you hit a mob, you'd be doing X damage. And if you hit a mob with Mage Beam, you'd be doing, if you had 600%, you'd be doing seven times that amount of damage. The thing which you need to build for is strength, crit damage, and intelligence, because then you can get more damage from the strength and the crit damage and you can get the bonus percentage from the intelligence, which correlates into the Mage Beam. So basically, you're a Berserker with a bit of intelligence. Anyway, that leads on nicely to how do I build for Mage Beam. And basically, you need to put your armor on Necrotic and all your talismans towards damage. So on every single piece of my armor, I get 866 Point two five um, intelligence, and that would be higher than everyone else because I am Catacombs 34, so it would increase it by a bit more. Though contradictory to what some people believe, you do not put your talismans on demonic, you put your talismans on damage talisman. For example, I put strong on my epic and legendaries, forceful on my epic, and shaded on my rares, commons, and uncommons. So that's pretty much all you need to do to build. But another thing you need is a good pet. The best pet to use would be a level 100 legendary ender dragon. Though if you cannot afford that, you can use something like a griffin pet. Legendary would be best, although you can use a rare one, or you can use a legendary with a skeleton pet. Or if you're running frozen blaze, which not many people are, you can run a level 100 legendary blaze pet. So now that I've sort of shown you how to actually build for left click mage, I am going to get onto showing off some different mage beam setup and showing how much damage I can actually do. So let's start on 5 star shadow assassin armor with tarantula helmet. 15 million at the start, then on this one 17 million. Now with reef falchion I'm going to be doing 67 million and 72 million. On Blood Mobs with Giant Sword, I'm going to be doing 166k. Remember, throughout most of this video, I'll be using Giant Sword, Shadow Fury, or Reaper Falchion. Now, onto there, 156,000. And on this one, 173,000. Now, on Shadow Assassin, I just 
do a 1.5 million damage to it, which was quite insane. But now that I'm coming on to a Midas, it is a lot slower at killing, but Midas's normally take ages to kill, and the speed I'm killing it at is quite fast. So I'm already doing a 100k a hit, and by the end, I'm going to be doing a 1 million. Now if I test my effective health, actually switch over to my uh, Ender Dragon pet, right here, I'm going to have 370,000 effective health, which is quite low to be honest, and I think it should be higher. Now on Lost Adventure, I just destroy through it, 900k at the end, it only takes me a few hits. Okay, I couldn't find the clip for the end of the damage at the end of the dungeon, but I just want to mention I was doing around 30 to 40 million. Now I'm going to go on 5 star Frozen Blaze with Tarantula Helmet. As you can see off the start, I'm only doing about 8 million a hit, or 9 million, which is a lot lower than with Shadow Assassin. Also, when I'm versing a Shadow Assassin, I'm only doing about 500k-ish, which is even less as well. This armor set definitely isn't as good, although it is still quite a good armor set. As you'll see me on these blood mobs doing 124k. At the end of the dungeon, I'm doing how much? 15 million, 28 million, that seems more reasonable. 19 million, and if I go test on the parasite things, I'm going to be doing 24 million. Now onto a giant, you'll see how fast I can kill this. And it isn't as fast as I would like. It is quite slow, to be honest. But just remember, one up of this Frozen Blaze is that you get a lot of effective health. Now I'm going to go to 5 star superior. So at the start of the dungeon, I have 180,000 effective health. And so yeah, 180,000 effective health, which is decent. And I think it's like in between both the sets. If I'm doing damage at the start, I'm going to be doing 7 to 7.7 .7 million to 9 million. Then I'm going to be doing like 800k or 80k to that, which is quite good. And over on this Lost Adventure, I'm going to be killing through it decently fast, but not very fast. Then on Shadow Assassin, this is towards like middle of run, I'm doing about a million a hit, 1.6 million. Which is quite good, to be honest, but it's the middle of run. On Blood Mobs, I'm doing around 112,000, which is lower than both sets. At the end of the run, I'm only doing 20 million damage, which is very low. And when I kill a giant, it's even worse than Frozen Blaze. It's even slower. It could be because the giant ran, but it is very, very slow. And it could also be because I'm being a noob in melee. Alright, so I'm going to test these setups outside of Dungeon. Firstly, Shadow Assassin, well, Frozen Blaze Ranch, I mean, 227k. Superior, 236k, and Tarantula, 306, 301, or Shadow Assassin Tarantula. So now I'm going to do a quick test of Berserk versus Left Click Mage. Left Click Mage is out here doing around, let me kill this thing. Let me actually see if I can. 7 million, 7 million. Berserk is doing out 2.5 to 4. So you can see Left Click Mage is definitely a lot better. Alright, so I'm going to give my final overall review on Mage Beam. I think Mage Beam is pretty much too overpowered. And I could see a nerf coming to it. Because, like, you're doing three times the damage of Berserker. Which is pretty insane, and it is too overpowered for a class which is supposed to be right-clicking and not even left-clicking. But until it does get nerfed, which I highly suspect it will, Left Click Mage is going to be amazing to use. And you can do insane amounts of damage. Like I saw Oro Panda with it, did like 114 million damage with the Giant Sword. Which is quite insane. Anyway, that's my opinion on Mage Beam. And I think I'm just going to end it off there. But anyway... Thank you for watching this video, subscribe if you enjoyed, I'll hopefully Floor 7 comes out soon, 